Coming up on Vegas Nation game day, the Raiders will hit the road in search of the team's first win. We see the things that we're doing good and you feel good about those things and you're like, okay, but then we're like, ah, but this, we still got to get this right. We still got to get that right. Like, yeah, we're close, but it hasn't, doesn't matter yet. Raiders, Titans, both 0-2 and looking to make a statement. Raiders fast takes and smart coverage coming up right now on Vegas Nation game day. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal, this is Vegas Nation Game Day. Presented by DNR House of Diamonds, making luxury affordable. Located in the One Summerlin Building in downtown Summerlin. Welcome in football fans to this week's episode of Vegas Nation Game Day. Cassie Soto here with you as we take a look at what the Raiders need to do in order to secure their first win of the season over the Tennessee Titans this Sunday. Let's get to it with our opening drive brought to you by Capriotis. Make your game day extraordinary with Capriotis. Order now. A loss is a loss at this point. You know, we got we to gotta figure it out and the, the urgency is definitely there right now. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot that went into why we didn't win that, fo that football game this past week. But it's, it's on everybody to think that, you know, it's, it's your job to do your job. And if you do, and everybody has that mindset, I mean, you know, you may call me crazy, but I think that if any team, no matter what team it is in this, in this league, if everybody has it on their mind that their job on every given play, you know, they got to give their all, whether they're play amazing or whatever. If you play as hard as you can on any given play, I think any team in the league will win the game against whoever, if every single person buys into that that way. Cassie Soto and Raiders beat writer Vinny Bonsignor here with you. That, of course, was Devontae Adams. And no mincing of words coming from the star wide receiver, Vinny, saying that this team needs to have urgency and figure it out, and maybe calling out a couple of his teammates there, saying that everyone needs to do their job. How high do you think their sense of urgency is in the Raiders' locker room? Yeah, I think the sense of urgency is high. It's not panic, but it's definitely a sense of urgency. And I actually appreciate uh, the candor from Devontae Adams there. I, don't, I would hesitate to say that he was calling out anybody, but he was certainly challenging everybody on the team, whether it's Derek Carr himself, offensive line. Everybody's got to do their job. That's the point of this whole thing. And in order for the Raiders to get this thing turned around and to play consistent football, which they've shown in spurts that they could play good football, but to maintain that, you have to be at your highest level of efficiency every single snap. Is that possible that every single snap you're going to play great football? No. But the more great snaps you play, the better position you put yourself uh, in to win games and to play a consistent brand of football. And that's simply what, merely what uh, Devontae Adams is trying to say. Everybody do their job at the highest level possible. Rep in and rep out, play in and play out, game in and game out, and good things will happen. It's when you stray, stray away from that, the standard that they're trying to set for themselves here, that problems occur. Well, we know the Raiders can put together at least two good quarters of football, but it is, of course, a four-quarter game. What will be the X factor in order for the Raiders to secure a win on Sunday? Yeah, I think, A, they got to match the physicality of the Tennessee Titans. You're always going to find out how tough you are when you play the Tennessee Titans. I don't care where it is, what field it is, but going over there uh, to Nashville, Tennessee, it's going to be a great crowd, a great atmosphere. The Raiders have to match everything from the intensity to physicality, so that's number one. But going back to what Devontae Adams said, and this is why he's a team captain and why I think he's a breath of fresh air here, to kind of telling it like it is, challenging everybody on the team to play good football, on a consistent basis, no deviation from that. You do that, you're gonna put yourself in a position to win a lot of games, including on Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. Well, I know it's only week three, Vinny, but is this a must win game for the Raiders? Is it a must win, kind of, sort of, yes. Uh, that said, there will still be 14 games left to play uh, the regular season. Who's to say if the Raiders lose, they don't win 14 straight? I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but it's possible. So when there is a possibility of something happening, you can't really truly say something is a must win. However, the Raiders need to win this game in Tennessee on Sunday. Flip the Field, brought to you by South Point Sports. Download the app at southpointsports.com. It's Heidi Fang here with our Review Journal sports columnist, Ed Graney. It's time to flip the field and take a look at the Tennessee Titans. Here we go, Ed. Both teams 0-2. Right now, the Tennessee Titans are just as badly in need of a win as the Raiders are. Everybody knows just what a powerhouse running back Derrick Henry is. How do you unleash him for this game, Ed? 
You know what, Heidi? Uh, you know as well as anyone watching the game where Derrick Henry likes to run between the tackles. So the Raiders are somewhat banged up in, in their interior. That's going to be an issue. If Derrick Henry gets going inside, it could be a long day for the Raiders. So they're going to have to ratchet it up inside and at the second level. We know how good Derrick Henry is. Um, but if he's allowed to roam inside off tackle those zone runs, it's, it could be, like I said, it could be trouble for the Raiders. Defensively, the Titans have not done well. We saw the numbers the Bills posted on them. Right now, the Titans are just behind the Ravens and the Cardinals in terms of allowing the most amount of touchdowns in the NFL through two games. How do you think the defense tries to lock down Derek Carr and company? You know, this is interesting. It kind of flips on the Raiders, right? Is Hunter Renfro going to play? And, you know, I think I think what the Titans are going to do is the first thing they're going to do is they're going to look at the Arizona film and see how Devontae Adams was taken out of the game, whether it's the deep safety coming over, bracketing him, trying to mess with him a little and get him into coverages that he doesn't like. If I'm the Titans, that's the first thing I do. I go and see how the Cardinals did against Devontae Adams. If Hunter Renfro doesn't play, it's going to make it a lot easier for the Titans defense to defend the Raiders. Then all of a sudden you just have Waller, Jacobs, and Devontae and not the fourth option. So that's what I would do. I would go to that film, see what Arizona did. Maybe look at the Charger film as well. The Devontae had all those targets. It starts with Devontae Adams for the Raiders. So if I'm the Titans, I find out how I can limit him and then make other people beat me. It's kind of what usually is going to happen every week with the Raiders on the opposition, but that's what you have to do. You and I were there for Devontae's press conference this week. I think it's going to be hard for the Titans because he seems like he's really, really focused to get back going. Hunter Renfro, the big name for the Raiders, declared out ahead of Sunday's game against the Titans, but he's not the only one. Denzel Perriman, linebacker, will also miss his second straight game. Hunter Renfro suffered that concussion at the end of last week's contest. Uh, he has not been able to practice this week, hasn't cleared protocol, so he will be unable to play on Sunday. Kind of a late addition to, as well to the injury report. Josh Jacobs is ill. He was not able to practice each of the last two days. He's listed as questionable. He's not traveling with the team to Tennessee, but if he does feel better, he may be able to travel later on on his own and join the team and play on Sunday, but certainly a situation to monitor leading up to the game against the Titans. A whole bunch of guys questionable for the Raiders as well, including Andre James, who missed last week's game with a concussion. He is sort of out of protocol, was able to practice in a non-contact jersey the last couple days, but he still is questionable for Sunday's matchup. Trayvon Merrick has a hip injury that he suffered in week one. He missed last week's game, didn't practice much at all this week, but did get a limited session in on Friday. So we'll see what his status is for the game. He is questionable. He's gonna probably try to go, uh, but no word officially on that just yet. Defensive tackles up front, uh, some injuries there as well, really testing the depth of the Raiders, but certainly uh, those big names at the top, Hunter Renfro uh, being out of this game along with Denzel Perriman, big losses on both sides of the ball for the Raiders. With this week's injury report, I'm Adam Hill. DNR House of Diamonds is Las Vegas' elite private office jeweler, the perfect bridge between internet pricing and a traditional brick and mortar jewelry store. We specialize in loose diamonds, natural and lab grown, engagement rings, fashion jewelry, custom design, and jewelry repairs. We operate by appointment in our beautiful offices in the One Summerlin Building, downtown Summerlin. Our great relationships with the world's largest diamond wholesalers and our low overhead saves you hundreds, if not thousands, on your purchase. With Capriati's game day is always extraordinary. Fuel your passion with our award-winning cheesesteaks, in-house oven roasted turkey, and classic subs. Or create a fan frenzy with our catering trays that are perfect for any crew. At Capriati's, we deliver extraordinary to you. Listen to the Vegas Nation podcast three times a week, featuring Vinny Bonsignor and Sam Gordon to kick off the week with First and Ten. In the middle of the week, catch Heidi Fang's takeaways. And rounding out the week on Fridays is Ed Graney and Adam Hill with unsportsmanlike conduct. Subscribe to the podcast and check them out as well on VegasNation.com and the Vegas Nation app, all powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Vegas Nation, fast takes, smart coverage. Darren Waller's name has been synonymous with what it means to be a comeback story. Now, he's paying it forward by creating grants to help others in need to get into recovery programs to overcome addiction. The Raiders tight end sat down with Vegas Nation's Heidi Fang to talk about hosting the third annual Beyond the Wall event to raise money for his foundation and spoke about the mental fortitude that the Raiders have to have after starting 0-2. The growth of the foundation has been tremendous, uh, something that I didn't anticipate uh, when I first had an idea of wanting to do something like this. Uh, just the way the community has supported and 
people everywhere just uh, wanting to give any kind of exposure or support in any way that they can to help it out has been amazing. Um, just the way that we've been able to develop programs to serve people out here and really see lives be changed has been something that's just uh, mind-blowing to me, but I'm extremely grateful. The biggest uh, expansion part has been the Against the Wall program. You talk about paying it forward. I was offered an opportunity to go to a treatment that I wouldn't have been able to afford at the time with the funds that I had, but the NFL allowed me to go. So it's me wanting to give that gift forward because that gift changed my life. So we have an opportunity to send people to treatment for 30 days. We have up to four months of aftercare planning for them when they transition out of treatment. Um, about 36 grantees total so far, 30 have graduated, six are in treatment right now. So, and that comes out to over $540,000 that people have generously given to allow these people to have a chance to have their lives changed. So the Against the Wall program is the, is the big thing to help these people literally get their backs off the wall. So getting into the team now, there's a, a lot of expectations on this offense. Now that you need to go in to Tennessee, um, face the Titans, like what kind of messages are being told amongst this team? What do you feel like the mental strength is like with this team right now? Um, I feel like it's high. I, I don't feel like anybody's panicking. I don't feel like anybody's uh, pointing fingers or, you know, getting over the top frustrated with anything. You know, I feel like it's people that have been through things, have been through tough spots have been through times where, you know, Josh has been through tough times in his his coaching career, and, and you can tell that he has a sense of calm about him in this process of how he's going to go about things differently, and just in players as well. So it's guys that realize, like, you know, it's, it's about sticking to fundamentals, you know. You go back and watch the tape, there's a lot of fundamental things that we can all do better across the board, and those translate into into things. You know, you can have a 20-point lead at halftime, but still not being playing as good as some people may think. Like, and sometimes those things come back to bite you in the second half. So it's all about sticking to those things and how consistent can we be on those and do the things that are hard uh, consistently because winning is hard in the NFL. And, you know, you got to be committed to do that for three hours on Sunday. So uh, that's something that we're definitely chewing on and, uh, you know, marinating on right now. But, you know, you get a new chance on opportunity on Sunday and we're excited about it. Something's got to give when the Raiders travel this weekend to play the Tennessee Titans. Their week three meeting is the only one featuring two of the team's five 0-2 teams. 400 teams have started 0-2 since the NFL-AFL merger in 1970, and of those 400, only 38 have made the playoffs, or a total of 9.5%. That figure drops to 2.6% among teams that start 0-3, and only one such team has qualified for the postseason since 2000. That'd be the 2018 Houston Texans. In the Raiders' way is a Tennessee team that's yet to find the mojo that helped it capture the AFC South last season. Through two games, the Titans ranked 27th in yards per contest and 28th in scoring. All-world running back Derrick Henry has yet to find his groove, averaging 53.5 yards thus far and a paltry 3.1 yards per carry. The Raiders are 6th in yards per rush allowed, yielding 3.7 yards a pop in their two outings thus far. But that number did swell last week to 5.1 as their defense fatigued in the second half. Defensively, though, the Titans are among the league's most vulnerable, ranking 26 in yards allowed at 404 per game. As the statistics show, the loser of this game will essentially be eliminated from playoff contention, barring a minor miracle. I'm Sam Gordon, and that's the story by the numbers. For a look at this week's betting lines, let's hear from sports betting columnist Todd Dewey. Thanks, Cassie. The look ahead line on the Raiders Titans game last week at the Westgate Superbook was pick 'em. It reopened on Monday as the Raiders. One and a half point favorites. And then on Tuesday, the line shot up to two and a half before settling at two after Tennessee suffered an embarrassing 41 7 loss at Buffalo on Monday night. Titans also appeared to have lost left tackle Taylor Lewin to a season ending injury. Total is 45 and a half for this matchup of two and 0 team, two 0 and two teams desperate for a win. Per usual, the local sports books will be big Tennessee fans in this one as betters are still backing the hometown Raiders. 70% of the tickets on the Raiders at Station Casinos. Books will also need the game to go under as 58% of the tickets are on the over at Station. After blowing a 20-0 halftime lead and a loss to the Cardinals, the Raiders now are 1-6 against the spread as favorites, haven't done well in that role, and the Titans are 8-4 against the spread as home underdogs. 
professional better I spoke with thinks there's been an overcorrection to this line and that the favorite should be flipped to Tennessee by two, though there's not much difference between plus two and minus two. The good news is one of these teams will come out of here with the win and or the cover as both teams are 0-2 against the spread and straight up this season. That's a wrap for this week's episode of Vegas Nation Game Day. The Raiders and Titans both looking for their first win of the season. Sunday's matchup is set for 10 a.m. Pacific time. For more Raiders news, you can always head on over to VegasNation.com. For our entire crew here, I'm Cassie Soto. Have a great weekend. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal, this is Vegas Nation Game Day. Presented by DNR House of Diamonds, making luxury affordable. Located in the One Summerlin Building in downtown Summerlin. Are you kidding me? It's game day.